Okay, I guess we can call the meeting to order. I'd ask uh, Ms. Nancy Miller to come up and do the invitation, please. Uh, many of us have probably heard of Reinhold Niebuhr, his very famous uh, theologian, lived from 1892 to 1971. And if you don't know the name so well, you know his work because his words have become the underwriting theme of all Alcoholics Anonymous. His prayer was, God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference, living one day at a time, enjoying one moment at a time, accepting hardships as the pathway to peace, taking as he did this sinful world as it is, not as I would have it. Trusting that he make all things right if I surrender to his will. That I may be reasonably happy in this life and supremely happy with him forever in the next. Some of you may not have heard these other words he said at another time. Nothing is worth doing. Nothing that is worth doing can be achieved in our lifetime. Therefore, we must be saved by hope. Nothing which is true or beautiful or good makes complete sense in any immediate context of history. Therefore, we must be saved by faith. Nothing we do, however virtuous, can be accomplished alone. Therefore, we must be saved by love. No virtuous act is quite as virtuous from the standpoint Point of our friend or foe as it is from our own standpoint. Therefore, we must be saved by the final form of love, which is forgiveness. Uh, I want to thank each of you who has made a contribution to the Angel Fund. And if you haven't yet had the opportunity to do that, we are in the final week of our drive. This is a way we can show our love to our fellow team members here who can quite easily can get in a very serious financial, um, <laughs> financial hardship. So uh, again, thank you for those who have contributed and if you haven't, please prayerfully consider doing that. Thank you so much. Thank you, Nancy. Uh, we have guest speakers today. Our associate, I mean, our interim executive director, uh, Jeff Hagen, will be up first, and then Ms. Bailey will follow right after that with the back room. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I only have a few pages of notes. <laughs> but not only. If you're lucky, those notes aren't for you. So it's a good thing. I always appreciate the opportunity to, to meet with the residents in your formal setting, where it's your meeting, where you get to discuss what you would like to work on going into the future, too. It gives me an opportunity to kind of tell you where we are as a leadership team of what's happening in the community from our perspective as well. You may have noticed in the past couple of weeks, there's been a couple of committees getting together. One was in here on Monday. A week ago, the Monday, we were back over in the, uh, in the room talking about the township, the town center out here for renovation. I know these are two projects that have kind of been on the books for <laughs> this many years, I guess. <laughs> uh, the town center in particular, I know the the drawings that I've seen are at least two years old, and some of the things that were picked up were a couple of years old. Well, we found that uh, things probably have changed over the couple of years, so Chris actually authorized us to pull in a resident group to talk about that. So working with your, your past presidents, we came up with, a, I think, a very good committee group to look at that. 
Um, so we have are working forward on those both both those projects. Uh, we spent considerable time here on Monday looking at this room. So we'll be working forward with a couple of different decorators on the town center area, as well as the space in here to do that. So that's something we'll keep you up to date on as we go forward there too. Some interesting news, we all have talked over the past few months about our staffing situation. And I just found out this week that we are basically full staff. I think we have seven open positions now on campus. Um, and zero agency usage for the past two weeks. So we were doing much, much better over there in that area. So we're happy about that. Along with that, we also look at our turnover rate. And our turnover rate year to date is 4%, which is amazing in this industry. Typically it's your 50 to 60% turnover. So we are hiring the right people, orienting them the right way, and keeping them employed. So we're very happy about that. Along with that, I know we've had discussion over the past several months talking about what happens if I need a room or a bed over in assisted living or in healthcare. And I know we had an issue in the past where beds weren't available. So we implemented a new bed management program where we look every day at what beds we have open in healthcare. And we have taken two beds and specifically noted them as we call <clears throat> short stay beds, so those will not be filled unless one of you folks need to have a bed. So they are going to much manage that process much better. So going forward, there should be no concern about what happens if I need a bed in healthcare. There should be a bed in healthcare. <laughs> Another thing with that, we're looking at the Medicare A certification. When we get that completed, We'll have 20 beds that will be certified for Medicare A residents. The good thing about that, two good things actually. Number one, the revenue from that will be pretty good. The second part though is the average length of stay in the Medicare A bed is 16 to 20 days. So even though if we have all 20 beds filled, there'll be a bed opening up in the next day or two. There'll always be a bed opening up very, very quickly. So let's say for example, in our all of our other beds, we have two people have a bump in the night and wind up in health care, and so those two short stay beds that we have are filled. We know that within a very quick time, probably within a day or two, one of our Medicare A beds would open up for another bump in the night situation. So when that happens, we'll be covered from both sides as far as that. So if we ever have an issue in the future about not having an open bed, it's going to mean things are going really good because Medicare is stuffed to the gills and nobody's moving right away and we've had too many bumps in the nights, which I hope we don't have. Okay, so that's a good thing there. Um, I mentioned Medicare A certification. We had a mock survey last week. From the clinical side, Adrian and her team did a very good job. There are a few things we're working on over there. On the life safety side, which is Lacey side, the, the building aspect of it, we have a few things to work on that side, but we're still shooting for having all that stuff completed by a week from this coming Friday, next Friday, March 3rd. At that point in time, we'll notify the state that we are ready for the, the survey. They will put us on their schedule and they'll be out within a relatively short time. The challenge there is we don't know when. It's a surprise visit. They just show up and they say, here we are. And so we have to be, have to be what we call survey ready every day, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And not just for survey, but that's the way we'll operate going into the future because they have the potential of coming in for a survey anytime throughout the year. If you, you know, God forbid, aren't happy with something in healthcare and call the state and say, hey, I don't like what's going on, they either will do a phone call survey to see what's going on or they may actually show up as a complaint survey on campus. So they have to be survey ready 24 hours a day a week. 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365. So that's what we are. I think I talked about CARF last week at our town hall. We did wonderful on that. So if you see any of our staff members over there, uh, thank them for everything they did. A couple recommendations, but nothing of any severe magnitude. So we're very, very pleased with the outcome of that. Okay, that's all I have for that. I may be back. Okay. I've, got, I've got a question for you. Yeah. This has been asked to me a couple of times since you were talking about healthcare. Uh, we have 60 total beds. You know, we're pretty filled up in healthcare now. 
the 20 beds that are coming on Medicare are not additional beds, they're part of the 60. So, what, I don't understand, or I, I've had several people ask me, how is this gonna work if you're filled up in healthcare at the moment, and you're gonna take 20 beds and move them to Medicare for short term, how is that gonna work? We won't do it all at once. So let's say we have 60 beds right now that are filled. Actually, we have five open beds right now. We have two for the short stay and three just that are open right now that are not being filled. We would fill, right now, we would say we would fill those three beds that are open, that are not short stay, we'd fill those with Medicare A. We wouldn't fill another long-term care bed with Medicare until one or two of them opened up. So it would be a transition over probably, I would say, three or four months before we actually transition to where we actually have 20 Medicare A beds. And then going forward, we'll be able to have the, the bed management process will be in place, and so we'll be able to make sure we have a room for anybody who needs one when they need it, plus manage our Medicare A beds as well. And will those 20 beds all be in an area eventually? Eventually, yeah. I think initially they'll be kind of here, there, and everywhere. But the goal is to try and consolidate them into one area. Because um, what happens if you go to the hospital, let's say you, you have to go and get knee, knee replacement, but you need to come back for therapy. We want to put you in, in an area that has residents who are of your same cognitive ability. It'd be not very nice to put you in a, next to a long-term care resident and have to have not a good experience. So that's the challenge we have. So it'll be here, there, and everywhere, but as beds open up, we'll just consolidate. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, Good afternoon. Our coffee and conversation with new residents was a huge success. We have 10 new residents come to the coffee to talk with the officers and chairs and committee members of VACRA and to learn about VACRA and of course to join VACRA. Our purpose was to, uh, we gave them background information about the organization as well as our purpose and our mission and we had a lot of questions. And we were pleased not only with the questions, but the discussion and the fact that just about all of them made a commitment to join that group. We were very, very pleased. And I hope they did, but I won't know until March 1st when I get the list. <laughs> if they didn't, we're, we're gonna contact them. <laughs> Thanks, of course, goes to Sally Wood, who planned and arranged everything to do with the coffee. And we look forward to continuing this practice of inviting and meeting small groups of the new residents. And it's nice to have them in a small group because you can get to know everybody and then I can remember the face and the name. Otherwise, I wouldn't. <clears throat> Our February meeting was a presentation on stronger memory, and it was very well received by many, many residents who spoke to Barbara or spoke to me about what a good meeting it was, how much information they received, and it was just a, a marvelous, marvelous meeting. Even though it was Zoom, it wasn't an in-person meeting, we all got a lot out of it. And we thank Barbara Fiske for planning, for organizing and arranging everything, and for working with Theresa Mandela to be with us on that day. Our March meeting is going to be of interest to everybody, I think. The Cedarfield Social Work staff will review the variety of assistance available to our residents. A primary part of that discussion will center on how decisions are made with residents to move 
to the various levels of care. How the evaluation is made, by whom, how much family is involved. What if there is no family? What happens? <coughs> what if there's no family to help with the decision? Or day-to-day -day questions? Or even writing checks once in a while? They're going to talk with us about what is available and how to access all of that. <coughs> As usual, all residents are invited to our educational meetings. And if any of you have a topic of interest that you think the residents might be interested in, please let us know. Our educational meetings have been very successful, and we want to continue that. Oh, and by the way, our membership is increasing. We have 170 plus. I'm not sure of the plus yet. Not until March. <laughs> and guess what? If you haven't had the opportunity to become one of the 170 surprise, plus, surprise. I happen to have the applications with me. Thank you. I thought Charlotte had slipped there for a minute and she said purpose. <laughs> the purpose was to get more members. Of course. Bill? Can I go back and ask Jeff a question? Sure. Uh, this last subject, I, I was not sure. Yeah, let me get you a, let me get you a microphone. Jeff, in your last discussion on this Medicare wing, I think there is some confusion, and I've been a little confused too. Those 20 rooms are still part of the 60 health care rooms we had. I'm a continuing care resident, as the majority of us are. So if I have a serious problem in the hospital and I need care when I come home, I think I'm correct at least 20 Medicare units are going to have the top of the nurses, I mean, to qualify for the Medicare, they got to have the best of everything. And if I come to one of those rooms, there is no extra revenue for Cedarfield. And I know everybody's talking about all this extra revenue, but you're anticipating the reality that the majority of those rooms will be filled with <laughs> outsiders. Is that not correct? I don't believe that'll be correct, but it all depends on what happens you know, internally. If the Medicare A is the short-term stay because you had a hospital stay requiring therapy or some skilled care, yes, as a life plan member, we would generate no extra revenue to us, you're right. But it still is possible that I would not be able to get one of those rooms that's occupied by an outsider. The, that would be, it's, it's, the potential is there, yes, if they're all filled. But the thing is, with 100 and, with an average length of stay of 16 to 20 days, I could almost guarantee you we'll never have all of them filled because there's always turnover. I'll hold you to that. Okay, I, I've done this before and I know the experience, it's always been a situation people worry about, is there gonna be a bed for me for Medicare if I need it? It's very difficult to keep 20 beds filled with people for ever because the turnover is so, so quick. We're preferred choice and we had to go to Our Lady of Hope on two separate occasions. Would we qualify for a bed here at Cedarfield? Question was, she's preferred choice that she had to go Lady of, Our Lady of Hope for. Would we, would we be on the bottom of the list or would we be there in, in our regular term? Yeah, my understanding is if you're a preferred choice and you go to the hospital and you qualify for skilled care, you would come back as one of our residents and we bring you back under Medicare. I, I know it's scary, but I think once, once we start bringing these residents in under Medicare A and you see how quick they turn over, the comfort level will go from a little bit to a little bit more. Too. Okay, I feel pretty good that when I need a bed, I'm going to get a bed. Thanks, sir.
Everybody, I assume, has had the minutes. Uh, can I get somebody to recommend approval? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Uh -huh. So moved. Um, my opening remarks today, first I want to thank Eddie Miles back here in the back. I'd like everybody to give him a round of applause. Eddie does his job with a smile. It's always ready. Everything has been perfect for every meeting I've been to. He is the man, in my opinion, and when you see him around, thank him for all he does. Well, it's been quite a year. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to serve as your president. Someone asked me what it was like. I said, it's like uh, piloting a cruise ship. You can't turn it very fast, but you hope it doesn't sink. <laughs> so uh, I, think we, I think that's what we did this year. We at least didn't sink. And I feel very good about next year with, with uh, Ann taking over as president and the officers that we have here. I think that this ship will sail brightly into the future. There are many good things that happened last year, and I can, I'm not going to go over all of them, but I'm going to bring up a few. Uh, we approved a resolution of the resident participation in ongoing projects. Uh, this was pretty significant in my opinion. Uh, uh, Ann Williams, we can thank her for her leadership in this. I think she covered all the bases. And I think going forward, uh, the administration has heard, and you have seen that there are committees of residents that are now uh, poised to help uh, with their input on these, on these uh, projects going forward. They even so much that they paused the, uh, they paused the uh, area out here and in here until we had input from all from the residents. Uh, secondly, um, due to the joint effort of Ms. Bailey and Backroom, we, we actually came together a little bit and uh, uh, we have now at the point of discussing, I think in this month, uh, a resident of the Board of Directors of Pinnacle Living. Is that a phone or is that my hearing aid? Fire alarm. Oh my goodness. All right. <laughs> So, that's typical, isn't it? <laughs> I would like to thank Ms. Bailey and all the backer for being the lead in this issue. Okay, smoke no fire probably. Um, for taking the lead in this issue and uh, I appreciate all their efforts in getting this done when we came together and I think we'll have a positive outcome on that. We have some great committee work in all areas. Thanks to the Communications Committee for Cedarfield Voices. Thanks to the Wellness Committee for the continuing to offer great activities, including pickleball. If you can't find something to do in March out of this informer, something's wrong with you. It's unbelievable what's available. Uh, thanks to the Facilities Committee and Lexus Salomon for keeping this place up and running. Thanks to Dining and the operation and the cooperation of David Stewart and the staff to offer the best dining experience in this area. Thanks to the Flower Bill for brightening our day. Thanks to the Library Committee for all the upgrades. Thanks to financing, Finance for making the finances more transparent. Thanks for gardening, environmental, and the subcommittee on recycling. Thanks to health services, they worked through many leadership changes. Thanks to our welcoming committee for helping all the residents feel welcome. I thought the committee work was outstanding this year, and I appreciate you all. Thanks to our area reps and ambassadors for the important work that you do here. It's really critical that you stay involved. And and you've done a great job, and I look forward to the new people next year following through with that. Some many things happen here that are just, uh, you know, you, you see them and you think, well, this is just routine. Just one example, Ann and I were uh, doing a CARF review around the building with uh, three people on an iPad. And uh, the reviewers were looking, and they were very impressed with all the facilities, especially impressed with dining, and then we came across this poster about walking through the parks of America. And of all the things that they got excited about, they got excited about that. Because they said, we have never seen this in any facility.
facility that we review. So I thought that was interesting. And is Tom here? Would you stand, Tom? Thank you. Finally, thanks to Vivian uh, McCoskey uh, for keeping me afloat, quite frankly. Now, those roses are for you, darling. They're for me. <laughs> uh, thanks to Ann Williams for being the best president elect anybody could, could have. I can promise you that. She's going to be a great president. Thanks to Terry Parsons for stepping in right in the midstream and doing this job. I think they all deserve a special round. Yeah, so on the committee work, uh, communications. The communication, the communications committee met February 13. Uh, Ann Williams introduced Viv Vivian McCoskey as the incoming chair of the committee. She'll become chair March 1. Uh, we, had, we did three things, discussed three topics. Name tags, Nancy Miller announced that it was firm that the marketing department will replace the court on the current name tags with a clip. Residents need only ask. The opportunity will be announced on Channel 974, and that has happened, and will continue to happen. Uh, we talked about 9 to 7 4. After um, much discussion, the pros and cons of leaving exercise programs on 974 that had been added during the COVID scare, slowing the loop of the informational slides on 974 versus the ease of having exercise programs easily available. You could make that argument on both sides, and the committee pretty much did at length. The committee approved that a questionnaire be sent to all residents asking if they exercise with these programs. So that committee will be making that decision based on solid information. Channel 973, the committee agreed that Channel 973 is sometimes difficult to view. Major problem appears to be a lack of organization. Among the specifics on Touchtown, dining channel 973 and dining menus are redundant. Atrium menu appears in the middle of dining room slides. The dates on three slides are at least three months old. Several slides have too many words. Some use future tense to announce programs that have been in existence for months. Menu slides and information slides are intermingled. Some slides overextend the screen. The slide with hours of service on for the atrium appears to list breakfast as every day but lunch and dinner days are undetermined. Thank you. Who is responsible for those slides? The dining division. Okay. And lots of it, lots of the problems are the, the program, the computer program that they're using. Okay. As opposed to individual decisions made by a whole lot of people here. Well, I'll talk to Dave Stewart about that one. Thank you. Dining services, uh, Robbie? Good afternoon. Uh, first, we discussed at the dining committee meeting, which was held on February 15th. Uh, we discussed the CARF results, and uh, as Jeff said, uh, all over it was good, and dining was very good. Uh, I, I, the person who did the survey for dining was the dining director at a facility, I think Erie, Pennsylvania. And <clears throat> here's what she said. 
Cedarfield's dining services were second to none and at the forefront of dining experience. So, uh, and she's done surveys in the U.S. and overseas. Uh, a couple of places she mentioned were China and uh, Kuwait, I think. Um, as Jeff said earlier, the staffing is continuing to improve, and uh, there are still a couple of spots uh, in dining, and, and they probably will be all the time, because there is a lot of turnover in, in that restaurant industry. Um, if you might have noticed, the front kitchen has been closed, and uh, all of the Cooking is done from the back kitchen, uh, except uh, the showcase. This will allow Prima to open now. No big news now. It was last week. I guess you got uh, the flyers that Prima is opening Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, and they'll have a couple of entrees that are exclusive to Prima. Um, and rest of the nights, the regular dining will be at the Prima location, so that still will be there. Um, tenderloin, lobster, and lamb chops, as you know, are continue to be expensive, so they will be served on special occasions, and maybe a couple of times a month. And if they become less expensive, they will increase the amount of times. Uh, the community table, the Four Seasons table, in its current iteration was not successful. And since it's such a hot topic, we will continue to pursue options. It's very interesting, I, some of you might be here. Uh, there's a group that gathers in corner table at the uh, Atrium Cafe, and that's pretty much a community table. People come in when, uh, when they want to and have dinner with the others. If there's no spot, they cannot sit. So it's very much acting like a community table. And uh, so is the uh, bar in the pub. Uh, people, uh, they do make reservations, but it does make it easier, like in the um, atrium situation, where the food is being delivered. They don't need a reservation, and it's being delivered. So, uh, we'll continue to pursue that. Um, the air conditioning in the uh, atrium cafe, finally, will be done by end of June. We've been talking about this every month since the beginning of this year. And uh, we've asked for that to be moved up if possible because it can get hot in the kitchen even early. Uh, the household dining has improved. And if any of you have any comments on that, uh, I haven't tried it, but I've told it is good. The entrees are now being provided by the main dining room, which was not the case a month back and uh, the sides are cooked uh, by the household uh, chefs. Uh, and if you, as again, if you have any comments on that, would love to hear. Um, currently, the, oh, the, the special events, well, Valentine's Day evening was a tremendous success, and there were 180 people dining that night, and everything went very smooth. Uh, last night's Mardi Gras was, I think, was very good. The food was excellent. Um, and there will be a wine tasting and wine cellar clearance sale on March 7th from 5 to 6.30. If you want to come and buy some. And what they're trying to do is restock the wine cellar. Um, currently, large quantities of cardboard boxes are being take, uh, taken apart by hand. And uh, that's time consuming and uh, very expensive way to do it. 
So we ask that there be a compactor for the cardboard so that it can be more environmentally friendly and save money. Uh, the last thing I'd like to just touch on is complaints and compliments that you have for operations or dining. The best thing to do is to talk to the floor managers immediately when they have a problem, talk about it. Um, Jim and Steve are usually there. At, one of them is usually there at every dinner and lunch. So you can talk to them. Uh, if you want to do it another way, you can send an email uh, next month. But it has to be prompt. Uh, next morning, uh, the latest, need to send an email so that they can work back and check. So if your steak wasn't cooked, well, who was doing the cooking? And why wasn't it done? So these are things that you need to know. And I know people come up and they do to the dining. Uh, well, last week, you know, I didn't like such and such. Well, that doesn't help. So I just ask that you use that. And if all else fails, there are the cards in the promise, the comment. That's it. Uh, any questions? Any questions? Okay. Uh, that, uh, environmental, is there a whole report who's got an attachment to this facilities, Susan? Facilities Committee met on February 14 and the chocolates were shared. Uh, Mr. Salamone had prepared responses to all of the agenda items which facilitated discussion. The wayfinding signs are ready to be mounted on each floor by the atrium elevator. Phase two of the signage project has identified the need for 360 new signs. Careful review and proofreading of each potential sign will be required before they are manufactured. The vendor is currently preparing an updated cost proposal for this job. <clears throat> A bid proposal prepared by James River Exteriors for the external insulation and finishing system for the exterior of the main building is currently being evaluated by Pinnacle Living. In addition to major repairs to the front of the building, window replacements are also part of this very significant project. As part of the Accessibility Committee and Difficult Doors Project, a total of three doors were identified that need to be automated. The first will be the administration marketing door, <clears throat> and the necessary equipment for automation has been ordered. The D-Wing elevator foyer door and the CD walkway door will follow next. Uh, Robbie, thank you for covering the atrium kitchen uh, HVAC system, so I'm going to skip that. Uh, Mr. Salamone reviewed the electrical vehicle charging stations located at Windsor Mead and Williamsburg and reported that the stations are leased and customers are charged via credit card for their use of the stations. Lacey envisions possibly two stations with a total of four ports for resident use here at Cedarfield. You may have noticed that two beavers have left the Cedarfield pond. However, much to our surprise, a new beaver has arrived. <laughs> So sorry. In any event, this beaver will be taken care of to
to avoid additional tree damage. Scott McDonald has worked out in the pond area to clear the spillway. And Mr. Hagen, thank you for covering the renovation. So I'm marking off another paragraph. Uh, the maintenance team members <coughs> are currently working on 10 refresh units here at Cedarfield, and there are an additional 16 in the queue to be refreshed to get up to current day. For the year 2023, there are 32 more units which require being refreshed or that are eligible to be refreshed. However, some of the units may have been vacated due to moves to the apartments, to assisted living or health care. So work is being done to refine the list in hopes that the number 32 can be reduced. Committee members voiced concerns about the number of employees and contractors parking in the resident parking lot, and it's making it tough some days to find a parking place for residents. Mr. Hagen, thank you, uh, has indicated that he would take care of this concern. The main automated doors, <coughs> excuse me, at Parkview have been repaired to prevent them from being opened without a fog. This has been a security concern, especially for those living in a building. Thank you. Any questions? Questions? Go. The phone is Carol. I guess I'm going to compete with the fire alarm. <laughs> Maybe, maybe the ship is sinking after all. <laughs> <laughs> the Finance Committee met in the Prima Club Room on February 20th, 2023, to discuss the second quarter of the fiscal year for Pinnacle Living Obligated Group and HCRC. We had two guests from Pinnacle. They were Daniel Neiman. Chief Operating Officer, and Kevin Salminian, Chief Financial Officer. David Taylor reviewed the Cedarfield Statement of Activities and compared actual year-to-date with budget year-to-date, as well as last fiscal year. Although there was an increase in revenue from residence fees, there was a larger increase in operating expenses resulting in being slightly over budget. The areas of dining, building, and grounds, neighborhood, which is health care, expenses were also over budget and higher than the last fiscal year. This resulted in a significant decrease in net income over last year. It also has an effect because we, out of the income, pay for our interest on our bond debt. David also showed the capital expenses to date of a million five and the financial statements for Hermitage Capital and Reserve Corporation, which we call HCRC. Several questions were asked about the purpose of HCRC. Dan Newman said the purpose of this corporation is to provide services to residents by entities owned by HCRC. This would enable Pinnacle to keep the resident rates and fees down because it is operating as a nonprofit rather than a profit entity. Kevin Salmon said that some of the proceeds from the sale of Hermitage Northern Virginia went to HCRC to invest in future opportunities. Questions were also asked about the occupancy, which has been covered, and Dan said a new system is in place 
based on actuarial studies to determine the need for resident space and an individual has been hired to manage the process. The goal is always to have a place for residents when needed. So restating some of his. Kevin stated that it was budget planning time for the next fiscal year. There is still tremendous pressure on wages. And even though the employment vacancy rate is down, it is still difficult to find replacements. The three areas of increased cost include labor, food, and utilities. Dan and Kevin will attend our next meeting when we have the third quarter's information and review Pinnacle's strategic plan for the future. And we are greatly anticipating that information. The Finance Committee thanked David Long for his service on the committee as he retires. He served both as a member and as past chairman. You will receive the Cedarfield Statement of Activities for the six months as an attachment to the minutes. Any questions? Thanks, Carol. Elder? The Health Committee met in the Chatterbox on February 2nd and 2. Adrian Oliver and Tamika Ross were also in attendance. The occupancy rate for all levels of health care were at 100% that day. There were six persons in the health care area that were from outside and not residents of Cedarfield first. That's been a big rumor going around that we were loaded with people from outside. So we got the exact number from Tamika and Adrian. Tamika reported that the nursing shortage had improved greatly. Three new registered nurses and 18 licensed practical nurses had been hired by Cedarfield, some on a per diem basis and some regularly. This should eliminate the need for agencies nurses that are a big expense and persons who are not familiar with Cedarfield. This is a real hoorah. All AEDs, now you're familiar with AEDs, these are what are needed if you have a heart attack and your heart stops or whatever and your heart stops. They, we've been since July with Adam. They were, we've had they're operational and in place. Additionally, this includes five new ones, one of which will be in the dining room upstairs. Team members will be invited to take on a class on how to operate the AEDs. Now, they'll go through that, but the AEDs tell people exactly what to do at the time. It just has to be applied. Uh, now, what if a resident or team member doesn't want to be resuscitated? They should wear a bracelet or necklace that says no code. Questions in the past referred to the long wait prior to call bells being answered. This had been followed and is much improved. They're answered within five minutes, other than on a very rare occasion and it's been followed electronically for accuracy, so they're dealing with real data. New news. When the Medicare area is approved, as Jeff has said, it'll begin with three to five beds with the opportunity to expand to 20. And also, when construction is completed, there will be 25 more apartments in assisted living. Additionally, another social worker has been hired to visit with residents who are hospitalized and help with the plan for discharge and the transition to where they're going. And it should help family and residents understand the plan. Any questions? Thank you. Thanks, Sabrina. Uh, welcome. 
The report, uh, wellness can leave you. This rose. The wellness committee met on the 14th for Valentine's Day. We didn't have any chocolate, so I, I forgot. Um, I didn't forget it was Valentine's Day, though. Uh, the highlights from the meeting, we start with a review of the programs from uh, Cajun Hudella. And if you, I know you've seen your informers, and I agree with the comment earlier, the uh, programs this month are unbelievable. I'll mention just a few. I was going to mention more, but um, there is a war memorial tour on March 7th. A dinner and a movie, Fable Man, I know I want to see that movie. March Madness, a brackets will be packed. Um, there's going to be a trip to the Virginia Living Museum, and I didn't know what that was, so I looked it up. It's in Newport News. It has aspects of an aquarium, a science center, an aviary, a botanical preserve, and a planetarium. So that's quite exciting. And then there is going to be a trip to all Henrico Reads and a lecture at the new Tucker High School. And I will tell you, if you've driven down uh, Parham Road and looked at that, there are a slew of whoops, solar panels on that uh, school. And it's brand new, so you'll get to see a new school. You'll hear a lecture uh, on a book that is in the informer and tells you what the book is. Uh, last month, the informer, uh, there was a request for people to sign up with Katrin or Alice and Zach if they wanted to volunteer. They got five people, so that's a lot better than the last time, which was about four months ago. But what, what's really needed now is some uh, people for uh, bringing assisted living people uh, to the evening programs in Fellowship Hall. So that's still a work in progress. Um, on fitness, um, I think maybe some of you know anyway, but Alice Carpenter is going over and doing fitness with the memory care and assisted living as they can fit it into the schedule. And James goes over and does crafts. So that's really a nice thing that the fitness area and the programming area is, is doing over in the license areas. Now, future plans uh, include dance lessons with Lakewood people. Um, that's in the informer also. And um, there was a big thank you for Tom Maxwell at the committee meeting also. So thank you again, Tom. And then the plans for Pickleball. Um, we have a licensed or a certified pickleball teacher coming in April, and we will start with lessons for beginners, a series of three, and if those fill up, we can add a second clinic a little later. But that information is in the informer, and for those who signed up that they were interested, they'll be getting something in their in-house mail. So we'll be looking for that. There is a registration. There are only six spots in each. If, if we fill up the first six, we'll have another six, but that's the limit. And I do think if you've never played again, that doing beginners is good for learning a little more and also for safety. So I encourage you to do that. Remember, it's the 15th of March to sign up. Um, and there will be information in the red book that says pickleball ball in the in-house um, mail room here, in, in the big house, as we call it. Um, and Creative Arts had a neat new thing. Uh, they're going to work for to find out closet artists and have a show. So if you know of anybody, please tell Judy Johnson or myself, but mainly Judy Johnson. On sports, we had a wonderful, um, very successful uh, party for the um, Super Bowl in the atrium. The staff did a great job, and I think um, folks had a, a really great time. 
So thanks to dining and dining upstairs, because Steve um, was actually there serving, and then um, two, actually it ended up three of the people that work in the atrium cafe regularly. Um, and now let me go. And just in closing, this is a day thanking, this is the end of a resident council year. So I want to thank all the team members and the staff for their wonderful service this year, from gathering ideas for programs, sharing feedback on programs with the staff, finding hostess for evening programs, running movies on Sunday, running bingo games, and that we thank uh, Sue Hilder and Alvira, and also retired people, Don Branson and Tom Maxwell. Um, getting information for sports on the Adrian TV and sports related parties and John Ferris has been doing a wonderful job. So for staff, thank you. Remember if you see them, Katrin, Hadula, Georgia Brown, James, Carol Thompson, Alice Carpenter, Whitney Hales. And on the committee, John Ferris, John Clickner, who does a lot with the veterans events, Mary Lee Canner, Jim Barinholt, Mitzi Angry, Emery, excuse me, Marty to Marta, Janoni, Martha Cole Glenn, Judy Johnson, and Jane Kelly, and Nancy Miller. And Nancy is um, going to retire from the committee, uh, but we got a new person, Nancy Springman, is going to join the committee come March. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? Okay, we move to area reports. Um, Robbie, are you going to report or do you just want to make this announcement? Mike? Yeah. I'm sorry? The library has a. Has I, I'm sorry, the library? Yes, I missed the library. Yes. And you are up yes. with the band from Sally Wheel. Sally. Yes. We are real pleased and think it's wonderful that the Henrico County Mobile Library Services supplements our Cedarfield Library. We're not always able to buy the books that have been recommended to us. We don't have that much money. <laughs> so the county library, of course, you're, you can go to the mobile services that will be here the first Tuesday of each month from 1 to 2 at the Park View, first floor Park View lobby. So mark your calendars if you need a new library card, a Henrico library card, or if you want to pick up a couple of books. <coughs> Excuse me. Also, you can call Georgia Brown if you have any questions about how to use the uh, mobile library services or wanted to check with when they're going to be here. But they are here every month. In the meanwhile, let us know, please, of any books that your book club friends or you have read and highly recommend. The request forms located in the black metal box on the small library work desk is there for you to use to make it a request. Mary Ann Fitzpatrick, our library's recent Energizer Bunny Award winner and its new book purchaser, appreciates your recommendations. And we have to evaluate that because, as I said, we can't buy every book that's recommended, but we do want recommendations from you. Thank you. Thanks, Charlotte. And Sally? How many hours at the mobile library? One to two. One to two p.m. Everybody hear that? Okay. Okay, Robin, you're up. Area, I have one, two, or three as a report from the area rep reports. Robin, number four. I'll just mention one thing, <clears throat> and I'm here representing 
four and five. The gray sand is here. Uh, we had a dinner and a, a talk, uh, I forget when it was, a few weeks back. And uh, we had Felicia Stevens from Affirmation Home Health talk to us. And she was very good in terms of explaining what Affirmation Home Health is and what their services are. So if you haven't heard her and found out, I would strongly suggest that you do get her. She's willing to come and talk to you. So, and thank you to Area 5 for all the hard work. That's uh, Grace Ann and Sally Ayers. Okay, Area 5, 6, 7, 8, or 9, I don't have any report. Area 10, there was an announcement that um, the new uh, area reps are Connie here and Cherish Pier. Um, 11, 12, 13, 14. No, no, 12. Say again. Not 12, 12. Area 12. Okay. We are sorry to have lost a member of our Area 12 family. Don Nagel passed away on February the 1st. We extend our heartfelt sympathy to Myra and her family. The Cedarfield Photography Club has provided a memorial exhibit of Don's excellent photography in recognition of his being the founder of the Cedarfield Photography Club. Please enjoy his photography. It's on exhibit in the front hall near the business office. Area 12 will meet at 10 a.m. on March 6th in the Chatterbox. Light refreshments will be served. Our speaker will be David Stewart, Director of Dining Services. We've heard the wonderful reviews we have given of dining services, so I thought I'd plan a program that would be nothing but positive. And his topic will be Cedarfield Dining, the big picture. Thanks, Harry. I don't have anything else until we get to this meeting in 21. Does anyone from 11 through 20 have anything? Jay, you're up. services on Monday the 13th to end up at St. Mary's with a stroke. But I'm here, I'm well, I'm no residual problems. February, I'm sorry, February 23rd has been a very, very busy month, but more to come before March blows in. We started off with the election of Robin Smith, who will take over as the area rep. Oh, she is in the back. Robin, stand up. The reintroduces is Robin Smith from Assisted Living. She is the incoming area rep for 21. Anyway, we started off with that for Robin, and she and I will be working together as a team next year. Uh, because we represent, the two of us will be representing health services, which means that the three households, Garden Grove, and its expansion, as well as memory care. So it's a big it's a big area. We may prevail on the council to increase the number of representatives to help us a little bit on that. It's a pretty big job. Garden Road has completed the second cycle in its renovations. Twenty plus new assisted living apartments are being added to the fourth floor above the existing ALU apartments. We've been housed temporarily in the Health Services Building, and now we'll use some of the newly renovated apartments as needed for our last temporary purge. Magnolia Amendment now moves to its permanent home on the fourth floor of the Health Services Building, so the three households are now almost settled in their permanent homes. 
Our very first wave of residents returned to their own apartments in August. The second wave headed to the Health Services Building temporarily on September 20th, and they returned to their refreshed apartments on February 13th, last Monday. Now, the last wave of eight residents will move to the newly created fourth floor apartments on February 28th, and they'll remain there until late summer. Meanwhile, Life in the Garden Grove spins forward with activities, Wednesday luncheons in the grill, and outings to area restaurants at least twice a month. We enjoyed a trip to the Olive Garden and the John Marshall with a tour of residential Richmond, including the Fan and uh, Windsor Farm before heading back to Cedarfield. We also had two invigorating sessions in our activity room with Alice Carter for Sit and Get Fit and had a great turnout. I think she'll be back in the world. Also a big birthday bash for our February um, celebrators and Mardi Gras was enhanced by people coming over to give us a little musical cheer and well-costumed <laughs> delights. Not to be at the but uh, I had the minutes written up, but we have a new bunny scene. Stein, Bunny Stein has just moved to Garden Grove. We're delighted to have her as a part of our family. Please welcome Robin Smith as she takes over for me, and thank you for, uh, all for being supportive of all of us. Thank you, Jane. Thank you, Jane. We had a couple of things of old business, but one's been covered. The Parkview door, if you heard on the facilities committee, was up at the last meeting, and that has been fixed. I, I tried to open it, but I'm not the strongest, but I couldn't open it. Um, the other thing was uh, came up about a fence, and I don't believe that's on the Cedarfield agenda, a fence along the front of the building. I, I, that is not part of anything that's uh, on the agenda at Cedarfield. So we're going to go on. We need to elect officers today. It's an important meeting. Uh, we also need to elect the committee chairs. Uh, the committee chairs are appointed, but they need to be elected. And I want to thank all the committee chairs from last year. What a great job you did. And many of you are remaining on in your committee. But for next year, we have communications. Vivian McCoskey, Diane Robin Virginianoff, Environmental Andy Carters, Facility Susan Hutchinson, Finance, Carol Markow, Flower Guild, Louisa Rucker, Gardening, Sally Sessoms, Health Service, Elvira Segetti, Library, Sally Wood, Religious Life, Nancy Miller, Safety, Sylvia Fine, Welcoming, Nellie Keener and Ann Ward, Sub Ambassador, Mary Ellen Acey, uh, Wellness and Leisure, I, I did like, I did like uh, Joe Biden, I said Sub Ambassador, Ambassador. Mary Ellen Lacey. Wellness and Leisure, Barbara Rose. I'm going to put them in nomination. Do we have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? You are elected. I'll go through the area representatives real quick. Uh, they, uh, they are appointed but do not need to be elected at a committee meeting. Area 1, James Farron, Holt 2, Don Lukoski, 3, Carol Rankin, 4, Frank and Dean, Mount Council. Five, Grace Ann Miller, Sally Myers. Six, Pat Alders and Joey Davidson. Uh, seven, Mary Ellen Acey and Ann Ward. Eight, Sylvia Fine. Nine, Rosie Whitehorn. Ten, Connie Aaron and Shirley Shapiro. Eleven, Carla Oliver. Twelve, Irene Caperton. Uh, Thirteen, Marty Lynn and Nancy Gardner. Uh, Fourteen, Sandra Manning. Fifteen, Ted McCormick. 16, John Rose and Alice Spillman. 17, Laura Lennox. 18, Sharon Heatwall. 19, Beverly Stevenson. 20, Linda Schleifstein. 21, Robin Smith, and with a sub of Nancy Rosencrantz. Linda? Yeah, my understanding was that Cynthia and I are going to be closed this year. Oh, wait, really? Representatives. You in? Cynthia. Okay. That's fine. Okay. 
Okay, we'll make that note. Um, thank you all for that. Thank you all, past area representatives, for your service, and thanks for your new ones. The final agenda item for me in the new business is the uh, elected officers of the residence council. Uh, the bylaws laws do not require that you elect the president because she was elected last year as the president elect, and that carries forth for this year. So we have three people that we need to elect today, and I'm going to put them in nomination. I would like to do it as a group. President elect Frank Miller. Secretary Treasurer Terry Parsons, Assistant Secretary Treasurer Mary Ann Bagby. I put that in nomination. Do we have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So carried. I am so happy now to turn over this meeting to our new president, Mrs. Ann Williams, and she can close the show. Thank you all. Before closing it though, Mike, I just want to say thank you. There's nothing else I can say. On behalf of all the residents of Cedarfield, you have presided over the Residents Council with a challenge or two this year. One, we had a change in leadership. And then we had a change in leadership. That's kind of the way the year has been. You have worked to make Cedarfield a better place to live with Residents Council adopting the guidelines for involvement by, by residents. We're now being included in some of the renovations designs underway. Your crowning achievement has been to get the Pinnacle Living Leadership to discuss the possibility of a member on the Board of Directors. Let's see if I can move that down the road a little bit. Personally, I want to thank you for including me in so much this year. I've been exposed to many discussions and activities that have helped me become acclimated to issues under discussion. When I was being asked to stand as president-elect a year ago, I made you pinky swear that you would not quit halfway through the year, and you're a man of your word. You have stuck with it, and I thank you for that. I now want to, I now want to present you with this token of my appreciating appreciation and there are two straws in this bag. Okay. Take it with you to the islands when you leave next month and enjoy it and don't even think of us. Thank you. And now that we move to the adjourn, is there a second? Exactly. See you next month. Thank you.